There aren't too many Sulins in the world. I haven't met another one. Why did your father give you that name? He was, I think, the uh, third king of Wessex in the 6th century. And I think his, his brothers were called Cherdic and Kinrick, so I think I got off relatively lightly. Change is coming to Longleat, the aristocratic house with lions in the backyard. This national treasure belongs to a lord like no other. Monogamy wasn't ever going to work for me. But he's handed control to his son and heir, Suolin. Sliding down these was a favourite as a kid. Who's moved back in with his new wife. Sort of a tingling feeling, because it doesn't really feel real. They're our nobility. They own this joint. They are of a, a standing and a breeding in society. Grand houses like this aren't easy to manage. You have to be an entrepreneur to survive. Hundreds of people now depend on them. Many of you will notice a lot of changes this year. I wouldn't have said Sioni got off to the best start ever. And having two lords under one roof creates its own tensions. They live in separate parts of the house, so they do like to live reasonably separate lives. I try not to do anything to irritate them. Now they must try to make a home in this most extraordinary of houses. He's inherited a massive responsibility and a huge amount of history. You have to just not be scared to use it. There's no point having anything if you don't enjoy it. We haven't done this before. It's October at Longleat, and the African residents are finally getting some peace and quiet. The estate's still open, but with the summer holidays over, visitors are thin on the ground. Lord Bath is in residence, as always, in his apartment on the top floor. Uh, anything else I can do? No, nothing else, thanks. Thank you. But downstairs, housekeeper Bella is holding the fort. Emma's in hospital. After complications in pregnancy, forced doctors to deliver her baby two weeks early by emergency caesarean. How is she? How is Emma? Uh, I think, I guess she's better, but I don't know. Uh, Joe told me yesterday she was getting better. But and how's the baby? Uh, the baby's okay. Everybody says the baby's okay. And what's wrong with Emma? Some finger on her head, some headache, I don't know. But it might be strong because she, she went to the hospital for a couple of days or more. I don't know. I hope it's nothing bad. Emma's at the Lindo wing of St Mary's Hospital, where Prince William and Kate had their children. After six days in hospital, she's about to be discharged, along with baby John, who was born weighing just under seven pounds. <sighs> Bit of a sort of bumpy ride, but thank God he was OK, and thank God they managed to find out what was wrong with me. We got to a point where we thought, well, this is not just a normal headache anymore. So we came up and uh, yeah. I had an MRI scan and I got a neurologist and endocrinologist and obstetrician who between them took charge and said, you know, this is something that needs some... Um, <sighs> needs, needs urgent attention. Emma had a temporary swelling on her pituitary gland. It's been quite traumatic for me. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But then the, the, the end, you know, happy ending and... Now All we just is well now. A good monitoring of me and him. So. And at nine twenty-six on Sunday morning, seeing him being hoiked out was uh, was fantastic. It just happened so quickly, and then suddenly, but ah, da da, yeah. you know. I think he looks like sealed in though. So much. Look. Like a slightly oriental version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I think he looks a bit Chinese. So going home to get ensconced and. Relax. A, a bit nervous to go home, to be honest. Days. I should have a tissue. Are you <laughs> sorry? I guess everyone's emotional when they have a baby. <laughs> I haven't got a tissue. Let me, let me grab you one. Oh. 
but they're so nice here. Like, they're so nice. And they're just so, like, caring and patient and everything, and they look after me so well, and they go after him so well. Like, any time of day. Obviously, he's up in the night, so sort of... It's, it's, um... Well, thank God we've got, um, some help at home coming. <laughs> to make me feel reassured. Outside, their publicist has arranged for a photographer to get the first official record of the future heir to Longleat. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. I did text you and tell you you were getting the ticket. <laughs> yes, I saw that. I saw. <laughs> right. Now to fit the baby's car seat. Oh, okay, so there's that one. That bit there. I need to undo. Is that all undone? Something here, yeah. How does that? So that goes in here. That's where you never had this problem when he brought the Georgia. <laughs> How do you? Can I, can I come around? Yeah. Come in. I've had it before. How they go together? So... No, that goes down. What goes down? Oh my God! What are we gonna do? Do you know how to do baby seats? Anybody? You know? After ten minutes, a nurse runs out to help. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lily. Hi, how are you? At their London house, a maternity nurse is waiting to meet them for the first time. So wonderful to meet you. This is John. Thank you. Oh, wow. Hired through an agency, Jilly will be living with the family, on hand to offer whatever support is needed. Uh, hello, Hi, Jilly. Nice How are you? you? I'm so happy you're here. Nice Lily, to you too. did you Hi. miss us? Ah! And they're happy with him. Good, good, good. Obviously, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really. It was relieved. a good week, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. It was fantastic. Dinner in a minute. It's very hungry. Oh, how comfy is that? This is the baby we've been telling you about. Yeah, you're very curious, aren't Lucky. you? One day, baby John will be the sole inheritor of Longleat, an estate worth £190 million. The legacy includes thousands of important artworks and antiques, some of national significance. The house employs a full-time curator, Kate, to look after it all. Her archives alone are so large, she's got a whole wing of the house to herself. This is quite an office you've got here. Yes, it's called the in-tray. Do you actually know where everything is? Mostly. It's a sort of archaeological heap system. So the more urgent it is, the theory is, the more adjacent and the higher up in the pile it might be. OK, so on your desk? Desk is light reading. But with 130 rooms in the house, there's not much time for light reading. If this wasn't a private house, say it was a museum and this was a museum collection, you would have a dozen or more curators, all with different areas of specialist knowledge, to manage it, without a shadow of a doubt. But there's only you. There's only me, yes. So that's why it's tall order. <laughs> For the last year, Kate's been making time to plan for one of the biggest house renovation projects in decades. The repainting of the currently light green grand staircase. The, the colour's been troubling you the colour, for some time. The colour is deeply troubling in the sense that it doesn't help any of the objects in the space. That's the sort of thing that obviously would concern me. The pictures do not look good against this green. The green is recent. It was done in the 50s by Lord Bath's father. Kate wants to restore the staircase to a more historically accurate beige. So the assumption is that the grand staircase area would look much like this. And we've kept it, thank goodness, as a reference point. 
So it'll make it much, much more coherent to return to that traditional colour scheme rather than this completely inauthentic and possibly, to use a colloquial phrase, a random green that we have now. With the house so quiet, now is finally the perfect time to carry out renovations. But to repaint will require taking down 58 priceless and very heavy old masters. Moving any one of them is a major operation. Is this the sort of thing that gives you sleepless nights? I think it should give you sleepless nights because that's getting it right before it starts is, the, is crucial. Dramatic change is the last thing head groundsman Paul is looking for. His job, and that of his 21 ground staff, is to conserve the Grade 1 listed landscape. Stunning, isn't it? Yeah, good place to get away from the madness occasionally. Largely unchanged for more than 300 years, the grounds are widely considered to be among the finest in the country. You just feel privileged to oversee something that as magnificent as Longley. I care about the landscape. It's important that we maintain the, the landscape that we see today for others to enjoy. But change is in the air. When Lord Bath ran the estate, he let it shut altogether in the winter months due to lack of visitor interest. The new management want a new winter model. I think it's possible because Christmas is a festive time and people are off, off uh, work and school for a long period of time that we can, do, we can be as busy at Christmas as we, as we are in the summer. Bob's decided to set up a brand new winter festival at Longleat based on Chinese New Year. He hopes the colourful decorations will draw huge crowds. The significance for, of it for us is that I think this is really going to be the thing that makes our year. Um, and uh, um, if we do it right, um, you know, we should set all kinds of records. A handful of decorations have arrived early from China, but there'll be 7,000 to go up in total. A Chinese workforce will be flying in to do most of the work, but Paul and his team have been drafted in to help. Uh, so, yeah, I might just want to move this in front and then put the other one. The big one's coming behind. We'll put them behind them and see what it's like. Just bring this one. How do these fit into the grey one listed landscape, do you think? Well, they don't, clearly. I think you probably want to get out of the way, Bob, and squash you. I'll be looking. The arrival of the lanterns is raising eyebrows around the estate. Well, I've been at Longleat for many, many years, and I've never seen anything quite like this before. The elephant has landed. From a distance, it looks a bit peculiar because Longleat is quite sedate. You've got the Great House, you've got English heritage, and then these monsters are being created in pink and yellow and purple. So one has to be um, open-minded, however, it is a little bit odd. It's definitely a risk, I and mean, I'm sold out on this. <laughs> and, um, and I've been the cheerleader for it, and if it's a bit of a bust, the staff may question whether they want to believe in the next big idea. As their estate is transformed in their absence, Suolin and Emma are still in London recuperating. This is his room, his nursery, which is my room when I was little. <laughs> it's the old artwork by me when I was at school. So is, is this your room then? Yes, yes it is. This is my room. We share this room. And basically when baby wakes up, then we go a trip to find mummy. Don't we, young yeah. man? We do. At all times of the day and night, we go trips to find mummy. For new mums, it's all kind of very new and babies make weird and wonderful little noises in the middle of the night. So it kind of, you know, it's hard for mummy to get to sleep when they're not sure of all the noises that they're mm. making. So you must be quite tired, aren't you? It goes with part and parcel of the, the job, really. It's a really strange thing, isn't it, to be up at such hours and yeah, up and down. The <laughs> little journal, my scribblings, um, and it's just about when the baby gets up and when the baby feeds, what side the baby's feeding from, whether he's had a wet or a dirty nappy, and it's just so that at a glance, if mum wants to know, then she can have a little look through and she can find out, oh, yep, yeah, it's quite, you know what it's like yourself, you forget. 
Emma's mum has been helping as well. You know this house, it has limitations. Nowhere to put anything. You know, there's really hardly any place to put flowers. So we've got them just piled up everywhere. And I really do feel really, really tired. I don't know why I'm having plenty of sleep, but every day I think, oh my God, I can't wake up. And <laughs> I bought some of those pro pluses. <laughs> yeah, I've been taking those, <laughs> popping uppers. <laughs> One day her grandson will be the Marquis of Bath. It's going to be tough for him, isn't it? I think. I mean, in a funny way, he's sort of got his career mapped out for him, hasn't he? Because obviously one day he's going to work with Julian on the estate. I think he'll be all right. I just worry about him for the bullying and stuff. Hello. Afternoon tea. <laughs> for now, he's merely cooed over. I'm dying for I love cuddle. it when his yeah. eyes are open. Do I get to cuddle? And John, you called him John? John. John Thin Built Mummy. So we thought that was quite a nice reference. That's a lovely reference. I was slightly worried you're going to call him something strange. No, <laughs> nothing strange. It's not an ordinary name. Isn't it is it? very nice. Nice, ordinary, ordinary name. name. I was really pleased about this. <laughs> Back at the ancestral home, it's 6 a.m. In a temporary porter cabin village on the grounds, a hundred Chinese craftsmen have arrived to set up the new festival. Their job is to build thousands of giant lanterns to cover 30 acres of the Longleat grounds. They'll be working seven days a week to get it done. Very good workers. Quick. <laughs> it's the only word I can describe. Yeah. Each lantern is created by building a metal frame and weaving silk around it. They're best appreciated at night when they'll be lit from inside. This whole festival is about scale and scope. Schedules are tight. There's a VIP launch in just five weeks' time. We're doing the right thing, but yeah, it's anxious. It's anxious moments. Still an awful lot of work to do between now and when the show opens. Work is also beginning inside the house. The grand staircase renovations are booked for a fortnight, but the adjoining corridors need clearing first. Well, it's a voyage of discovery, really, because you've got, um, you have to sort of break in. Kate must take down Emma's wedding dress, which has been on display here since her marriage. You couldn't possibly get into this by yourself because this is so heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeble. I don't know how she managed to get through the day wearing this. Emma didn't have to do a thing. She had four slaves, willing slaves to do all this. Emma's dress was a couture creation, which took six months to make. The stuff you can see that's shining is silk taffeta. And then there's tulle, which is very fine silk net. And there's lace applique, so that the sleeves have a real effect. Susanna, Emma's mother, had to spend a lot of time getting the worst of the grub off it, because Emma wore it on a photo shoot in the woods. But I hate to disillusion people, the shoes were not the pair worn on the day. They were utterly and completely trashed. They were so muddy, you wouldn't believe it. You know, you imagine going stomping through the woods in white silk shoes. Well done. Bit of a killer, isn't it? If while I've got the top like this, you can get an arm, and then we can process towards the box. Can you see where she went on that tramp through the bracken? So we just go and put it on the minstrel's gallery out the way in case anybody comes through. Working in an English stately home 
is a new experience for the Chinese craftsmen. Of course, they are very surprised. What do they say? They say, wow, the whole thing is sold by one family. How? Oh. <laughs> yes. We just have to really watch you know, pretty carefully with what, uh, with what, what they do because they, they don't really understand that we're a grade one listed building, that they can't just drill some holes into the, into the bricks and, and, uh, and just repair it after. So it, it's turned out to be a fair bit of work to uh, police them. You guys have seen them all coming, but everybody's surprised at how big they are. And that's yeah. the pro that's, we have to communicate. The yeah, scale, they are right? huge. That's, it's, uh, it's nice watching it all bit by bit. Yeah. yeah. It's certainly something that Longley hasn't seen before. <laughs> you wanted to top it, you certainly have. Yeah, you, you don't see this every day. No, you do not. So you can just imagine, can't you, people coming down the drive and going, oh yeah. my goodness, what are we going to do next year? Yeah. And the plan is to move these three dragons, which are, I understand, all chi lins. We've got almost half of my team now who pulled across to do something that's you know, not in any way horticulturally related. Paul's really been the one coordinating the equipment to move around all the different lanterns. We've really pushed him, I'm, I'm afraid, for this, and he's done a great job. He'll probably deny this, but I, I really think he gets um, uh, a bit of uh, juice from doing something different and um, you know, being involved in something like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, that, that's, he's not going to do any damage to that. So we're, we're, we're certainly not in any way a traditional grounds and gardens department. But we, we do what we have to do and uh, anything else that's asked of us. Uh, and in between we look after the grounds and gardens. Really, I don't get a choice. I, I have to lead from the, from the front and get involved. Good news. Yeah. <laughs> the best of the news. Best of news. Yeah, it's arriving. We <laughs> have our baby. <laughs> Suelin and Emma are finally returning home. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what life would be like for this little boy growing up here. Oh, it would be wonderful, I guess, with the, all the animals and all the park and everything. I think it would be a wonderful life. I hope so. <laughs> But to have a baby in the house is really exciting. I mean, we cuckoo over all the dogs that come in, so to have a real baby, it's going to supersede the petting of the dogs, isn't it? It brings back that lived-in feel to a house, and it's not just a, a sterile home that people come marching through. It is a lived-in house by a real family. So, you know, you've got the workers alongside the family, but it's their home, really. You know, the rest of us are just trying to go round them best we can. Some children have nothing now, you know, and the others have some. But I think you'll have almost everything. <laughs> yeah. They're here. They're right there. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. Hey. How are things? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, super. Yeah? A little good. bit more grey hair than before? <laughs> hey, how are you? Hey. Come, on, come, on, uh, come on out of the weather. Come on, come on out of the weather. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah, you're good. You're welcome. It's a little right. Isn't he sweet? Yeah, he's smiling. The way the two 
too long. Yay! Oh my god, it's been ages! In such a long time! Oh. Hi! We're home! <laughs> Hi, Bella, how are you? <laughs> Lovely to see you. Hi, Carlos, how are you? Baby time! <laughs> oh, hello, so thank He's you. Awake. He's awake. So finally, <laughs> there he is. Come on. No, no, no. He's Don't been cry. staring at everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's been fed pretty recently, so oh. he should be okay. Maternity nurse Jilly is staying with the family for the foreseeable future. She'll be sleeping in the nursery next to Suelin and Emma's bedroom. What's for dinner? Chicken soup and um, spinach soup for the, the nanny. She, she wants uh, spinach soup. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it's three weeks before the VIP launch of the Lantern Festival that management hope will transform the winter visitor numbers. Exotic creations are spreading across the estate. But the festival is also supposed to feature some lanterns on the lake beside the house. Under tight deadlines, the lantern team are desperate to start putting them up. But this particular lake has two wild hippopotamuses living in it. The Longleat animal keepers have insisted work can't start until they've made the lake safe. Well, I think if we... Um... Yeah, you see, look, they're already starting. Uh -huh. I do not think these uh, contractors, these builders, realise how much danger they are actually in um, with these hippopotamus. Even now, we're having this meeting, nobody said they were going to work over there and they're already there, so that's not particularly good, so we need to keep an eye on that. So, the reason there's four of you today, I'm afraid we do need a hippo watch. <laughs> Before anyone's allowed on the lake, the animal team must locate the two hippos. Hippos are territorial animals to say the least. This is their territory, um, so it's a, it's a challenge for us. In the wild, hippos kill more humans than lions do each year. We really need to know exactly where they are at all times. The boat team be out here and just permanently letting us know where the hippos are. As soon as they lose sight of them, it would be relayed down there and we'd have to stop work. The lake also has sea lions, but they're not such a worry. I mean, the sea lions are definitely more curious, but they're not vicious as such. Is that a hippo get ahead? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a hippo. Oh, good. I'm glad they decided to get out of bed first thing this morning. Oh, no, there's one there as well. Yeah. Well, at least we've got confirmed sightings. At this point, we could attach a little helium balloon to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hippos located. Another team start building a physical barrier. While all this goes on, the Lantern team can only wait. Baby John is being taken for his first walk in the grounds of Longleat. Hi, thank you. Born, that means that uh, all this will um, become his. 
but not just become his, like it's, you know, a toy to be played with. You know, the trees, the animals, and the people that you're seeing out there. You know, we all, um, all our lives are really sort of intertwined with the families. Myself, I had quite an idyllic childhood, I must admit, and I didn't really... But I just didn't have a single responsibility until I was way into my teens. It's a huge responsibility, I think, taking, you know, being a part of, of that family, and certainly, you know, being a, a firstborn, I should imagine, even amplifies that. Clear. Today, the ambitious renovations of the Grand Staircase are getting underway. Curator Kate has been planning them for a year. If you didn't feel anxious, you wouldn't do your job properly. It's necessary, because you need to be on top form and concentrating on what you're doing and absolutely aware of what you're doing, so you need to be stressed. House steward Jeff is responsible for managing the operation. If something was to go wrong today, I would be personally upset that I've damaged something. My main concern will be the artwork and just making sure that we don't risk it in any way, shape or form by cutting corners or compromising in any way. 58 fragile and very precious old masters are being taken down and put into storage so the light green walls can be repainted. One of the most difficult to move will be the huge canvas at the top by landscape painter John Wooten. It hasn't been touched for nearly 30 years and can only be reached by scaffolding. And we don't talk about value, so we don't say it's worth X or Y. I want everyone to know how important the Wooten is to the collection. My role is usually to bark if I see something that they might not have seen. We have some difficult moves where we have to go under hall lanterns and things, and it's difficult when they're, particularly if they're carrying something big, always to be aware in all dimensions at all times. A custom-made frame is required to carry the enormous painting. Just need to be careful on the top. very unusual in, in terms of my day-to-day -day job, so it's always quite exciting to do it. Quite nervous as well, but we've got some of the best art handlers in the country here, and so I've got absolute confidence we've got everything we need to do it right today. OK, right, gents with the frame. Doesn't mean I won't be sweating. Round, be, be aware of the cold painting in behind, then we need to slide in. Right behind the painting. Baz's side so needs to come back about two inches into the frame. A little bit more if you can. Right, just rest on the edge here. OK, what we're going to do is transfer into the letterbox now, so we need to take the weight from the bottom. Everyone understood? Yeah. Okay, on three. Two, three. Into the gap. Get comfortable. Yeah. Start the lower. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. Nice and gentle. Yeah. And step towards me. Back to me. We clear? Yeah. Right, nice and easy. Handles clear at the back. Work steady, steady. Yeah, nice and easy. Yeah. A bit more your edge, Stu. Steady, steady, steady. Stop. A bit more your edge, Stu. We're leaning, I think, are we? Well done, everyone. Have you got it now, then? is finally progressing on the lake. But the unique obstacles of working in a stately home and safari park have meant the lantern team are falling behind schedule. They used to have a, an hour break, but actually the workers, they asked to shorten their break to 40 minutes. It wasn't the manager's idea. Um, I, I think it's a manager's idea, <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, obviously the manager uh, gathered the idea into the worker's head. As they hurry to stay on track, 
Lord Bath is about to get his first tour of the spectacle unfolding on his land. It really is his estate still, and uh, although he's much less engaged with it than he might have been a number of years ago, I visit him regularly so that he has a chance to hear what's going on and it's, I'll show him some things. Another wifelet, Trudy, will be joining the tour. You're, you're going to be warm enough? You don't need a jacket? Um, I should be an okay, I think. This is really you, isn't it? Yes. This is really your bath. It's all these colors in this area. Yeah, yeah. It look, looks a little bit like some of your vests, doesn't it? <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. It's all most impressive. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sit here. Trudy's known Lord Bath for 16 years. It's it very easy to live with. There's no trouble of silk at all. It's it's soft, soft, and it's just very light. It hasn't got any bad manners. I don't like people with bad manners. He's got no bad manners, so that's, that's nice. It's very comfortable. And he lets me do what I want. 3D, Alice in Wonderland. Look over there. Look at all those Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful array of animals. Yeah, he liked it. Actually, he did a little bit more than I expected him to. We, we went into the last tent. I had told him, he wants you to just wait for us. And he was like, no, I'd like to get out and see. So good. If the winter festival is successful, it will be a significant boost to Longleat's income, which currently falls off outside the summer months. But without intending it, the Chinese contacts Longleat have made have given rise to a completely different opportunity. We, we are actually talking, are we, about a full-size replica yeah, of, it, of, of what we has? It's the house. It's the house. It's now they, they want to use, um, they want to use the house as a hotel, right? And then they want some of what would be the dining rooms and some of the other rooms they would right. turn into, you know, dining spaces, for, right? For guests and meeting spaces and stuff. But yeah, the exterior is, is a, is a full replica right. of the house, right? Bob's contacts want to build a second Longleat house from scratch in China, and they'll give the family a share of the income it generates. You know, something pretty much anywhere else that would be unimaginable, but in China these things, or things like this, do apparently happen. A delegation of Chinese government officials is travelling to Longleat to meet the family. The key person there is going to be the Minister of Culture right. for the Sichuan province. Okay. So he's the one that we want to make the impression on. I'll help them uh, secure, secure, the, secure land. the land. Right. As plans begin for a second Longleat, promotion of the original remains as important as ever. Today we are shooting Hello! magazine for Christmas and to celebrate the baby, I think, <laughs> and um, to celebrate our Chinese Festival of Light as well. Hello! 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 Everyone's here! Hi! Congratulations! Thanks! How are you? Since becoming Lady Weymouth, Emma's been happy to court the press. It's a very nice team, it's always the same team, and this will be our fifth article together, I think. And they're very, very nice, and they are very positive and happy and celebratory. Whoa! That's amazing. Who's that by? It's like a mermaid. Well, what goes under this? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. First decision, what to wear. So what we do is we can bungee clip it at the back. For six weeks yesterday. Yeah, which, I mean, you've, you've really gone down. I don't know if it suits me. <sighs> Next. Next. Oh. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yay. Yay. Ta -da. <laughs> now that's pretty, isn't it? It is well, really. The colour is glamorous. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Now, <laughs> you won't recognize me. Hello, baby John's presence is also oh. required. Oh. Hi, not me on my dress. Ah. Oh, you like lights? 
She's definitely the softer edge to everything else we're doing. I just think she's just a fantastic ambassador. And of course now with the new baby, we've really got a good one-two punch going for us right now. Try again. Come on, little John. He's not sure about all of this. Welcome to the world of media. <laughs> it is part of our brand that the family is involved. And, uh, you know, that's a double-edged sword because when you invite that kind of celebrity, you invite uh, a fair bit of scrutiny. Now, you sort of have to be a little less attentive to John. Okay. And just be totally cool. <laughs> yes. Just see. Because I, I kind of like, yeah. My head the other way. Yeah, yeah, too. Then it's that way. Yeah, this is all looking good, guys. Yeah, I like that hand on here, kind of quite nonchalant. Yeah, good. Not with that face, though. Monkey, who has control of the door? I mean, Monkey wants to be in it. Okay, Alice, Alice, go, go. Now, here we go. Yes. Great. Bad. Into the left. Gorgeous. If he... Oh. oh. We can't have that face. Oh, he's very calm. He never cries. Fabulous. Yes. Hold it right there. Hi. After nearly half an hour, Lovely. the shot finally okay. comes off. We might have got it. We've got it. We got oh, it. We've got you. We got, got it. We've got, got it. We've got it. We've got it. We've got it. But the repainting of the Grand Staircase isn't going so well. Lord Bath was never consulted, and when he found out, he vetoed the work. I think, I think that's Lord Bath and Lady Bath like the, the green scheme. They want to keep green. They want to keep the 1955 scheme, which Lord Bath's father put in to great dismay all around him. It's their house, so if, if they like the green, then the green stays. It was something that was uh, planned for approximately a year. Um, but uh, um, nobody uh, saw fit to consult my father, so uh, he has, understandably, I guess, taken, taken umbrage and uh, stopped it. Their dispute last year meant father and son often communicated through third parties. I assumed that he knew. Yeah, I, I, I've been going on for the last sort of nine, twelve months just assuming that it had been run past him. The paintings will now have to be rehung against the light green. There will be another point in the not so distant future where all the disruption has to happen again. So, um, it's uh, distinctly suboptimal. It's not financially efficient and it's not time efficient. And I'll leave it at that. I'll see you later. There's a further setback outside. Some of the smaller Chinese lanterns are struggling in the English weather. Head groundsman Paul is dispatched to fix them. He doesn't seem overly upset by their demise. It's a, uh, a design fault rather than a, <laughs> a growing aspect. That, uh, the wind is stronger than their manufacturing. So I think we might have to uh, communicate with our Chinese friends and uh, replace the flower. Uh, the structure's failed again. <laughs> Not as strong as a tree, obviously. It's an important day for Longleat. The Chinese delegation is arriving to consider plans for a full-size replica of the house in China. Hello. How are you? Good to rushing around. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. Red. 
Okay. I thought oh, that's red. good. That's good. <laughs> it's the right kind of red too. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> bit tighter than it used to be, but anyway, <laughs> just about fits. <laughs> How long are you going to be, roughly? Okay. Right. Should should we? Yeah, let's go down and check on the food. Do you mind if we go on down? So, um, you should maybe look at the menu. I'm just not sure about the white. The white one's fine, but I think we should change the red. Okay, I'll talk to The deal could provide a steady stream of income to help keep the estate in the family. If this project happens, and if it's successful, one can imagine that John could be... Um, running a very, very international business, potentially. Oh, it's bright. It is. Yeah. Good morning. Hello. 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 Mr. Zhang is the cultural minister for Sichuan province, an area of China larger than the UK. Securing his approval is vital for the project. Hello. 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 Pleased to meet you. you. How are you? This is my wife, Hello. Emma. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. We're very honoured that you've come to see us and Hello. travelled uh, such a such a long distance. Shall we go inside? And, uh, shall we take our seats? Mm -hmm. Suolin is hosting a gourmet lunch in the Green Library. Um, can I just make a short toast, please? I would like to thank uh, Minister Zhang and uh, the team from the Cultural Department for coming here today. And uh, cheers. 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 First, uh, for uh, my count, and uh, the I'm, uh, <laughs> the wife of my count. Yeah. We will do our best uh, to support uh, um, everything uh, in every way we can. Cheers. Formalities over, the food is served. After a salmon starter, English lamb. Chinese culture, it's respectful for all the guests to make a toast to the person hosting the meal. Now, are, we, are we trading until the end? <laughs> There's also a tradition of gun bay, draining your glass in a single gulp. That's a big glass. They call me to Okay, doesn't want to leave without meeting the head of the family. You're doing amazingly well. Actually, no, no, I'll tell you, like Glenn said, he's known the minister for years. He's never known him to have a drink. He's never known him to raise his voice in terms of, like, 
like right. having fun like that. Right. He said they're just, you could tell they're. I was saying, I, he's very animated. Yeah, he's <laughs> incredibly animated. Hi, Dad. It's a pleasure to meet you over here. Well, it is my pleasure. Uh, uh, well, thank you. Well, wish you uh, great health and longevity. And my uh, for you too. Thank you. 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 Nice to have visitors. Hmm? Nice to have some visitors. Yes. D did you know who they all are? No. <laughs> but um, still, it's nice to have visitors. Thank you very much. See you in Shendu. Absolutely. Yes, success. It was, uh, See you in Shendu. There was obviously a lot of uh, um, uh, handshaking and hugging and uh, some okay. really enthusiasm. So that okay. actually was probably pretty good uh, yeah. success. Sulin seems to have enjoyed himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he yeah. took the load, uh, <laughs> the load uh, instead of me for that. Oh, but uh, um, he's, you know, it is that sort of informal kind of formality that he gets, gets and really can have some good time. So he's, um, he definitely took one for the team. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad it was him and not me. <laughs> Tonight, it's the VIP launch party for the Festival of Light. 300 guests have been invited, including the media and friends and family. I don't know what Shannon is. To be honest, I haven't seen him in ages. I think he was on the helicopter leaving. Oh, help me with David. The guest of honor is billionaire entrepreneur Sir David Tang. How are you? Very good to see you. I talked to him earlier uh, this morning. He said he'd be looking out his window. Um, I, I think that's just where he is. And I think putting putting Seol in front and center tonight was the right thing to do. And you know, he was really the the, the biggest man in the room for for uh, most of our guests tonight, which is which is good. And uh, in some ways, uh, it's not a bad thing that Lord Bath wasn't wasn't here for that because uh, um, it lets him come back come all the way into his own. this. Long lead, sort of big responsibility, but it's also a great joy and a very lucky sort of place to be. It's important that we had a, somebody to pass it on to, so thank God for John. We've got him. <laughs> I just want him to have a great childhood. I had a lovely childhood with a you know, loving family around me, and I would give that to him, so I want him to you know, be as happy as possible. I suppose I can imagine in the future John growing up and getting married and starting his family here, and hopefully we'll still be here, so that will be fun for us to <laughs> start all again. <laughs> and be all over the house at different corners. 